Welcome to our lecture online and on our next example we're going to illustrate how to find the radiation coming from the sun but in other words how to find the power output of the sun which is the same as the dq dt the amount of heat generated per unit per unit time we're also going to find out what the intensity of the sunlight is when it reaches the earth and we'll also see how that relates to using Wien's law in just a moment so first of all let's write down the equation the QDT is equal to the um, emissivity of the material for the sun which would be one the constant a and t to the fourth power now a is the surface area of the sun and t to the fourth power is the temperature of the sun so first we need to find the temperature and the surface area of the sun now we already know the radius but what about the temperature well, if we use Wien's law, Wien's law says that the temperature of any object radiating is equal to 0.0029 divided by the wavelength of the predominant radiation coming from the sun. And for the sun, that is about 500 nanometers. So this would be equal to 0.0029 divided by 500 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. And that would then be equal to 5,800 Kelvin which means that the surface temperature of the sun is 5,800 Kelvin. We then plug that number in here, and then we use the radius of the sun to find the surface area. So coming back over here, we can then say that the power output of the sun, which is a dq dt, which means the amount of heat per unit time, is equal to the emissivity times sigma times the surface area times t to the fourth power. So that would be about 1. Sigma is 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8 watts per square meter times temperature to the fourth power. And of course, that would be Kelvin to the fourth power. We have to use the units. Um, that is sigma. Now the area would be pi, or let's see, that would be the surface area of the sun, which would be 4 pi times the radius squared. And the radius here is 6.96 times 10 <coughs> to the... 8 meters we have to square it out so this gives us a surface area of the sun and then finally we plug in the temperature in kelvin to the fourth power so it would be 5800 kelvin raised to the fourth power and that will give us the energy output of the sun and let's see here my calculator is in my back pocket let's find out what that is 5.67 e to the 8 minus times 4 times pi times 6.96 e to the 8 we have to square that and then we multiply that times 5800 to the fourth power and so that gives us 3.6 times 10 to the 26th watts so that is the power output or the dq dt of the sun all right now the next thing we're going to do is find out what the intensity of that sunlight is when it finally reaches the Earth. And of course the Earth is about 150 million kilometers away. On average it's more like 149,000 kilometers away. And so what would be the intensity of the sunlight reaching the Earth at that point? So the way to do that is to say that the intensity is equal to the power of the source divided by the surface area over which it spreads. Now imagine the sun shining in all directions, including towards the earth, and so by the time it reaches the earth, it's being diluted by shining over an area, like a beach ball. Think of it a huge beach ball, where the earth is at the edge of that beach ball, and the light is then illuminated all over the surface of that beach ball. So in that respect, we say it's equal to the power output, 3.6, times 10 to the 26 watts and we divide that by the surface area over which the sunlight spread which is 4 pi times the radius and the radius then would be the distance to the earth and distance to the earth let's say it's 149 million kilometers or 149 times 10 to the uh, ninth meters that would make it 10 to the 9 is billion so 149 million kilometers is 149 billion meters course we have to square that because it's the radius squared all right 3.6 e to the 26 divided by 4 divided by pi and divided by 149 e to the 9th squared equals hmm I still get this 1290 watts meters that would be um, joules per second or watts 1290 watts 
that would be the intensity oh, per square meter of course because it, it's intensity so that many watts per square meter is received at the earth when the sunlight leaves the sun and reaches the earth all right and that's how you calculate the heat generated by the sun and how much energy we receive by the time it gets on the earth or the intensity of the light by the time it reaches the earth